people realized the, the folks the folks at DeepMind realized the answer actually isn't to and this is sort of offsetting what I just said. You don't go in and train it every sort of go move. What you do is you teach it the rules and you teach it the reward function, which is sort of winning the game, and you let it play itself. <laughs> and, and and it just sort of it, it learns and explores and sort of and because there's there's a there's a fun there's a winning function, which is like the actual like winning the game. And there's the rules. And then you just let it explore sort of this latent space and figure out all the possible ways for it to do to build up heuristics and rules about like what's the best way to sort of operate. And and, and the key thing is this was all sort of done automatically. You didn't have humans in the loop sort of giving feedback every single time. It was able to sort of figure it out on its own. There seems to be some aspect of the training of O1 that is similar, similar to this, where and in part because the data set, I think, is geared towards this, but it, it's figuring out how to search and discover ways to reason and ways to figure things out. And so it takes that set of rules and, and logical processes that was put in by, by humans, and it generalizes them and sort of figures out how those can be used sort of broadly. Then that's part one. The, the training set and the actual training seems to be distinct. And again, Email us yes. if I'm getting these details wrong. <laughs> uh, we're doing the best we can here. Then the other big thing is at inference time, when you actually go in and ask a question, right. it has it, it's doing something called chain of thought, and it's it's generating these reasoning tokens. And what seems to be going on is when you ask a question, it starts, it solves it sort of multiple times, and it pulls on. Instead, when it's doing that probabilistic function, it's not it, it, it's generating like what's the next step isn't just the next token. It's the next sort of technique and format that it's sort of acute that it has in this training data from from this mm -hmm. RF sort of process. And it tries a bunch of different sorts of things. And then it sort of ranks what's the best one that makes sense. And then it works down it. And then but it's it, it has it's some sort of function that's checking its its work sort of as it goes. And then when it's wrong, it sort of resets and goes back further up the chain and sort of restarts what it's doing. Right. Now, this is really fuzzy exactly how it's working and what it's doing. We know that there is these, again, you're paying for these reasoning tokens that does not align with the tokens you're getting in the answer. Like it used to be you go into GPT and it spits out a bunch of tokens. You get the tokens on your screen. You know what you're paying for. In here, it's like, look, there's a bunch of tokens that are being generated where it's doing all this this sort of quote unquote thinking, mm -hmm. we're not going to show it to you because uh, whether it be safety reasons or I think the biggest one is probably competitive reasons because this probably reveals a lot of how it's actually working. But these reasoning tokens let us explore different techniques of solving this problem, let us sort of catch logical errors as they happen, go back and sort of reset and it's pretty remarkable. I mean, the the example that I used in the, the, the daily update was solving a crossword puzzle. And the reason I it's it's capable of much more than a crossword puzzle. But right. what I like about a crossword puzzle is I think it's a very tangible example. It at least it was oh, to me, and I hope it was to my readers. Of what we're talking about here, where if you make one mistake in a crossword puzzle, that mistake compounds. And if the model can't recognize it, then you're destined to be screwed as you try to solve the crossword puzzle. That's right. That's right. And, and I honestly think that's sort of like a catchphrase. This is a model that can solve crossword puzzles. Yeah. Now, how large can it scale in a crossword puzzle? Probably not. I, I, I haven't tried typing in. Is it, it doesn't do image recognition yet. So uh, I, can't, I, I wasn't going to type in a full New York Times crossword puzzle. I did do the 7x7 seven seven sort of Saturday one. And, uh, and, it, and it's incredible. Way, already gave you credit for being an absolute psychopath and getting the <laughs> mini crossword puzzle done in what like 64 seconds or something 64 <laughs> seconds yes <laughs> absolute madman great work by you no yeah. i mean I mean, this is a great example. I, honestly, it made me more supportive of your antitrust position because the reality is, is I have a good friend who's also very good at the mini. And so it just, it, it's the thing I try hardest at every single day. Iron <laughs> Competition, <iron>. really. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love to see it out there. I mean, 64 uh, is okay for a Saturday. You, you, you oh, a real man. good Saturday is sub one minute. Um, you, you know, well, sub one minute on Saturday, sub 30 second on, on, on weekdays. That's my goal. Notably, O one one was the only model that was able to solve the seven what is it seven seven by seven. seven seven by seven yeah yeah 
um, relative to the, all the all the other models, O one's the only one that can do that. Yes, uh, f- yeah, and, and it's funny because Quad Quad Sonnet three point five is really really good. Like it kept getting the five by five ones right, but there's a bit where it's just so smart that it's nailing the clues sort of on the first pass. Uh, you know, and, and it's sort of like to the extent it can carry all that in memory and sort of like figure it out is is very very impressive but it's still sort of that one shot one pass sort of thing and it completely fell apart on the seven by seven like it just like yeah. once it got something wrong and then it just sort of carried through it and the, the wrong numbers in different places and things like that and the thing but here's the thing it took a really long time in fact it failed the first time and i think it failed because it ran out of tokens like it's limited how much thinking you can do right now mm. But this is also really interesting. This is a model that does better and gets better answers the longer it takes, the more compute it takes. And so all these sorts of things, we, this is also different than the way models have been. Like, when, when, like you, get, you can get Llama running on your MacBook or running on your phone even, and it will work to the extent it fits in memory. You have to get, a, obviously, that, that's that's constraint number one has to fit in memory but then yeah. it, it will just take a really long time like i remember the first time you got like an lm uh, i think it was llama like running on your phone it was like this is incredible and also took like a second per token so it's like a right. little bit of words come out a little bit of words come out a little words come out <laughs> but that's just a speed issue right it, it, it like it, and uh you know you, you you make it really fast it will go faster it's not actually operating differently in this case more compute is actually making it better and more accurate because it can generate more of these reasoning tokens it can do more exploration of the space and this is a bit that opening i think was pretty quick they don't fully understand this either they know their scaling rules they don't know how to limit them how to fully charge for them right now there are limits on how many on how many tokens you you can you can consume and you in the api you can put further limits you know as obviously your cost could really spiral out of control here mm-hmm. but just th- this bit that we already knew about scaling laws on the training side right you spend more money you get more gpus you can imp- you can use more data and you'll get more accuracy this is scaling laws on the inference side the right. more compute and the more time the smarter it is it, it's like a very direct link energy equals intelligence like it's in a very sort of direct sort of way when it comes to this this on on the inference side and that's really compelling and interesting for the long run in terms of how you think about the economics it's really compelling and interesting in terms of like the 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 capabilities sort of of this what 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 it's sort of worth and um yeah it, it, it and and the other thing is things like efficiency and speed and we've seen this with with models, right? Apple's go, going to be shipping Apple Intelligence with on-device models that are going to be generating stuff on your phone, and they're going to be performant, right? right? Stuff gets faster. Stuff gets more efficient. The big thing is getting to the point where what you need to do then is make it faster and more efficient. Computers, that's, what, that's the story of computers for 50 years. Mm-hmm. Once it's possible, it will get faster. And that, I, I think it is reasonable to think that will apply here as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is all very interesting. And to be honest with you, over the summer when there were new models released, like my eyes had sort of glazed over because it was all iterations on basically the same product that had all the same strengths and weaknesses. And this is new to people like you. And, it, it you know, Ethan Mollick wrote a great piece about it. Gruber was intrigued by it as well. And when smart people are kind of mystified by what's happening and intrigued by the possibilities, it's worth paying attention to. And it's interesting because I haven't seen as many people flipping out about the release on like Twitter. Like if you go back to Sora or ChatGPT 4.0 even, those demos seem to generate more of like a euphoric reaction. Like, oh man, we're finally living in the future here. But what I'm hearing from you, this sounds... Like the idea of taking more time to get a better answer, that sounds closer to how humans actually work and conduct themselves. And so I it's a know. really great point because things like you mentioned, like Sora, for example, right? Think, things that are tangible or, or 4.0 with the voice, those are, it speaks to the challenges and the difference between like new technology and new compelling products, right? Mm-hmm. Talking to someone that sounds like Scarlett Johansson is like immediately sort of gripping and compelling. Seeing yeah. videos is like really gripping and compelling. But yeah, 
this is much more interesting than both of those. Like those were understandable given the technology, you could see how those sort of came to be. And this is, this is setting the stage for other things sort of down the road. What I think is really compelling is now I'm much more on board with a lot of this talk about agents, right? Mm -hmm. The, the idea uh, I've been skeptical, not skeptical, but not feeling like, the agent path wasn't as compelling as people were spinning up to be just because I felt as, as amazing as LMs are this fundamental reasoning function was, was, was missing. And yes, you could do validation and send it back to do it again. That is a tricky problem. It's not clear how well it scales. And you know, the, you're just trying to get it. You're trying to keep, it's like, you're trying to get it to give you the right answer. Give me the right answer. Give me the right answer. Give me the right answer. This doesn't memorize answers. It memorizes reasoning. 